flipping milfoil. It's uh, by far, hands down, no questions asked, my favorite way to fish. Like the two things I'm going to talk about today are like super high confidence techniques for me. Um, flipping milfoil, it's something I do a lot back home. Um, I don't know, you guys fish like Oneida, Cayuga, Champlain, places like that. You're going to have a lot of milfoil in there. And in the summer, I'm going to speak mostly about the summer and fall months, a little bit about the spring, but. Um, you know, it's my absolute number one confidence technique. I could do it for four days straight, not getting a bite and still think I'm going to get bit on my next flip. I have that much confidence doing it. it. You know, magical things can happen when you find them in the mill foil. It's most of the time, especially in the summer months, um, that July, August period, when you find fish in the mill foil, a uh, couple things really good about it. You typically have them to yourself, and there's usually a lot, a lot of fish in a very small area. They're very hard to find, but uh, um, I'll talk about spring real quick. And this spring, um, if you're fishing places like uh, you know the Potomac River or dirtier lakes where um, the milfoil doesn't grow out really deep, this spring deal is kind of going to be your year-round um, year-round stuff you're going to do versus uh, what I'm really going to get into talk about this in the summer stuff is going to be milfoil growing out in 7 to 15 feet of water. But if you know a lot of the places you fish that milfoil might only grow to 3-4 feet at the deepest all year. So um, I'm going to go through spring real quick. You know, it's a shallow deal. Inside grass lines seem to be really, really good places to look. They'll spawn on those, they'll cruise on those, they'll guard fry on those. Um, sand or rock holes inside the milfoil, always super key spots. And then uh, your, bait, your baits are a lot different when you're fishing shallow milfoil. It's going to be more winding stuff, a chatter bait, a swim jig. Um, probably the best way to, like, day in, day out to get a lot of bites is uh, fishing a, a stick worm. Texas rig, wacky rigged, weightless, a little bit lightweight on it, any of the options. That's probably your best way to get a lot of bites fishing grass. And then also, um, I didn't factor this in, but you know, top water stuff, frogs, buzz baits, if you're going to fish that shallow milfoil. Um, you know, like I said, at certain places it's only going to grow three, four feet. That's going to be like your year round spring, summer, fall. That's your deal right there. Um, and then punching as well a little bit, but uh, um, I want to talk more about summertime, deep, deep milfoil flipping. Um, I, I drew a really beautiful drawing that I'll show you guys in a little bit. We'll give you more in-depth on uh, what I mean, but summertime, I'm, what I'm looking for is the deepest, tallest grass. I want it to the surface, and uh, like I said, I'm a drawing I'll show you it, but uh, you know, typically the milfoil is going to grow to the surface, starting at the bank, all the way out. To, depending on what lake you are, it might be somewhere between seven and fifteen feet. You'll have it growing to the surface all the way out, and then it'll start to taper off. Uh, you know, as the bottom falls out, as it gets deeper, um, and thin out. But wherever it's the tallest, you know, if it's growing to the surface in eight feet of water. Um, you know, that's where it's going to be the tallest. If it's not to the surface, even though you're in nine feet of water, if it's two feet below the surface, that eight foot strand is going to be the longest one in that whole deal. Um, hard bottom areas are very, very key to this. Um, and it doesn't have to be like jagged rocks or anything like that. Uh, even just good, clean sand the milfoil is growing through is a really good place to catch them. Um, and then I'm always looking for the best looking grass, the greenest, thickest, luscious stuff I can find. Um, and th this will change throughout the seasons. You know, in the summertime, it's pretty much all beautiful looking grass. And as you start to dip into the fall and some of that stuff starts um, dying off and whatnot, you'll have, uh, you know, some of that stuff will start turning brown or red. And uh, I'm still always looking for that greenest, freshest, healthiest looking grass. Um, small spots, uh, when you're flipping milfoil, um, 
I'll get on that edge of what I consider to be the tallest grass. And as I'm going down it, I'm literally going to drop a bait probably at minimum every six feet all the way down that row. Um, it, it's amazing how many fish you can catch out of a, an area the size of this stage right here. I mean, I've seen it before. You catch 20, 30, 40 fish flipping an area this big in deep milfoil. So it's important to drop a bait. It, it's needle in a haystack fishing. It's, you're not going to pull up and first cast just start catching them doing this. This is something that takes time to locate them. But like I said, when you find them, you got them all to yourself. And, uh, you know, it's a, they get super schooled up in little tiny areas. It's Mike Iaconelli. This is Bash UTV. Here's what's awesome about Bash UTV. You get the top instructors. Real tools that help you catch more fish consistently. And that's why you want to check out Bash UTV. Join the Bass U family. Welcome to Bass UTV.